Hey guys, welcome back to the studio. Today we're going to turn this pile of junk into an awesome potter's wheel. Let's get started. Okay, so we got our timbers for our framing, and then the expensive parts was this one inch solid steel rod. I think this was like 20 or so dollars. And then we have one flange bearing. This is also 20 bucks or 25 or something. And in, in the other movies I've seen, um, people have built wheels like this, they use two of these. And that's not really right. This one's for the upper, just to stabilize in this direction. And then for the lower to hold the weight is a thrust bearing. Um, this one is actually designed to take a load in this direction instead of like this way, like a normal ball bearing, bearing like a skateboard wheel. So this is a thrust bearing, it sits that way, that goes on the bottom. And then we have a floor flange. Um, this is actually a three quarter inch floor flange, but the inside diameter of this is one and an eighth. So that doesn't make any sense, but we're gonna make this work. This is a floor flange for um, making furniture out of gas pipe, basically. It's kind of a, a popular Etsy Pinterest thing to do, I guess. This is at Lowe's, it was a couple bucks. So this is gonna go on the top and attach to our plate to then throw our pots on. And then we also have for the concrete weight, we've got this um, overflow pan. It's a 26 ID, 28 OD hot water heater overflow pan. Um, you can get a plastic one or a tin one, or aluminum I think they are. And this is only 10 bucks, a lot cheaper than trying to make a perfect circle out of something else, like try and form it out of wood with some flashing, you know, this is already a good perfect circle. So we're just gonna fill this up with concrete. And if you personally wanna make it a little heavier, all you have to do is build up these walls. And I think that's what I'm gonna do maybe. We'll see when we get there. Build up these walls a little taller and make that slab a little bit thicker. So the first step is finding a spot somewhere in your house that is decently flat and level to pour this concrete on. Because if it's not level, then the weight's gonna be all screwed up and you're gonna have a hard time. And this end of the garage is actually spot on level. Except for that direction. It's off about a quarter in that direction. Spot on level that way. shim up this side just a little bit because the floor is sloping this direction just about a quarter of an inch so we'll, we'll set that up set this pan down you see how this is warped but the, the weight of the concrete is going to fix that and then the only other thing we have to do is plug up this hole this is the drain hole um, and it comes with the fittings you just throw those away you don't need them just put a piece of tape over this which I'll do all right that's done and then the only other thing is I do want the shaft to be mounted in the concrete. So I'm gonna have to figure out a way to set this in the center, have it poke through a couple inches, and then support this somehow so that it's perfectly plumb. Plumb is up and down, level is this way, right? So I'll have to think on that for a little bit. Okay, so this is the setup I came up with. Instead of trying to build a whole frame to hold it up here. I just used the flange that I'm going to use, bolted that down to a 2x4 um, because I do need a little bit of space below the concrete to go into the thrust bearing. So that's mounted up. It's pretty plumb this way, but the 2x4 can roll this way. So I'm just going to shove these 4x4s into each other and that'll hold it steady enough that it's not really going to move anywhere. And then we're going to dress the wheel up later. So then this pan, cut a one inch hole in the top. That pan slips right over. And uh, we're ready to pour some concrete. So I'll just put a little bead of caulk right here to seal between shaft and the pan.
Okay, so it's uh, the next day. Concrete's dry enough to demold it, and it came out super easy. I was really happy with that. Put that Vaseline on there. So now um, I want it a little bit thicker, so I'm going to cut this out, put this on upside down, and then use this wall to uh, make it a little bit taller. And I intentionally left this all rough so that um, we'd have a good tooth, a good bonding surface for the next layer. So we'll make, mix up a slurry, paint that on there, and then pour another coat. Okay, so the top form's on there. You can see that. I ran a bead of caulk all the way around inside here. It's uh, Master Seal, that'll focus. Master Seal M MP1, also known as Butyl Rubber. Um, most people use silicone for a step like this, but I hate silicone for absolutely everything except for bathrooms, so we're going to use this stuff. Um, this just to seal it. So based on my reading online, um, to bond two pieces of concrete together like this to do it in layers, all we have to do is mix up a slurry with some uh, PVA glue, brush that on, and then pour our next coat. So, oh, and the, um, you have to get this a little bit damp before you do that too. So let's make sure we do that first. So let's uh, get mixing. took some doing but I got it on there and you can see that uh, I was a little bit off on <laughs> my depth of cut on those lap joints but this is spinning really well just all on its own so that that uh, flange bearing will go up here and then we'll dress this wheel so that it's all even and balanced before we really get it spinning up but just by itself that spins for a long time. I'm really pleased with that. So I left this one long one inch on both sides. On this inside measurement. So the wheel is 28 inches. 
this inside measurement it ends up being 30 and a quarter and then overall it's 38 inches wide and this way is 24 inches so it's a really simple construction we just got to put legs on it and build a little seat we're getting there so it's a little noisy because it's a storming outside but we're still working hard in the garage we got this crappy old stool that I got for free years ago and it's just been kicking out in the garage. You see I spray painted it a couple times. It's coming apart in a bunch of different places. So we're going to pop the top off of that, reupholster this, and uh, stick it on our wheel. It has a nice little cushion. And just like that, we've got a new seat. I put an extra little padding in it, wrapped it with leather. And I did the hide side instead of the suede side this time because of all the clay and water that's going to get on it. So, you know, easier to clean. Okay, so here's the rough assembly so far. Nothing screwed together, it's just kind of stacked. And I left these long so that we can mount the flange bearing here and then be able to shift it this way and that way to get that shaft plumb and then screw this down and have that perfect. Otherwise, it's a mess. And then we can also, because this is a 2x4, which is 3.5 inches, and these are true 4x4s, they're 4 inches by 4 inches, we can shift it this way and this way too, a little bit. And it's like, it's not the prettiest connection over here, but I really don't care. And the, the joints aren't perfect, they're not even good, but oh well. That's how you do, because I'm, I'm practicing, I'm learning. I'll get better at it. to add a little footrest so I just uh, chopped out three quarters of an inch out of the corners of both of these posts and then slapped this piece of scrap plywood in there and then put a little six inch piece here to support the end and it's plenty strong to stand on so nice little footrest while you're kicking back in the studio now we've got this uh, roughly 14 by 14 piece of 716 OSB we've got our flange uh, connected with a couple half inch screws and we are going to attach this onto this cutting board it's super flat and super strong and I thought it would be a good surface to work from that would be really weather resistant because this thing's going to be outside 100% of the time so we're going to glue these two together with contact cement Now I'm using Weldwood contact cement for this, the original fast dry formula, whatever. But you can use Super 90, Super 70, um, whatever 3M spray adhesive you want to try and use. I don't really think it matters all that much. Or if you want to just go with a piece of plywood for your decking, you don't have to. You can skip the glue altogether and just screw it right on. It's whatever you can make work for your purposes and your budget so it's not that big a deal so I'm going to do one coat on the plywood let that set up while I do a coat on the cutting board and then I'm going to put another light coat on the plywood because the wood is going to soak up a lot of this glue and I want it to be super 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 strong and then once we get it all glued together and mounted on the wheel then I'm going to make it into a circle so that it'll be perfectly centered because the flange there's a lot of play there there's not you know the tolerances are not the best for the rod that I'm using so you know it is what it is so we've got the plate on um, that's all secured it's just got a set screw in there and now we're going to dress the wheel 
I've got an angle grinder with a diamond blade on it, and I've got uh, all my safety equipment, even though it's really not safety stuff. Like I got eye protection, ear protection, and nose protection. So let's get to grinding. with an 80 grit flat disc. starting to overheat so not much time it's 100 degrees out before the camera totally dies but um, she's all done on the next video we're going to uh, make some clay we're going to dig it up in the yard sift it dry it out and throw a pot on this sucker anyway don't forget to subscribe thank you for all your support and uh, we'll catch you on the next one ciao for now